The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Let me tell you this incredible story. Today, I thought I was going to get a haircut. I thought. I called up my barber. I said, uh, can I come over? He says, yeah. Right now, the chair is empty. You want to come right now? There's no one here. I said, yeah. I don't want to say the name of the muckum. You'll see in a minute why. So I go out to my barber, a great guy. I jump into the chair. And right next to him, there's another barber who also was waiting for a client to come. And as my barber is cutting what the hair I only hope to once upon a time have, the guy next to me, the other barber, Israeli barber, turns to me and says, Rabbi Dubi, ani chayab li saper lecha sipur. He says, I just saw your uh, daily dose on the inch. Oh, come on. I said, thank you. He said, I have to tell you my story. I said, okay, let me hear. He says, I grew up in Netanya in Israel. He says, I've been a barber since I was 14 years old. He says, but you know, to be a barber has a lot of challenges. Many different areas of halacha. He says, because of that, I didn't know what to do. Wasn't sure if I was doing the right thing or not. So I went out to a big tzaddik, a great tzaddik in the Tanya. His name is Rabbi Amos. Rabbi Amos, it's a big tzaddik in the Tanya. They all go to him. Mamash, everyone, the Hasidim, the Svaradim, everyone knows Rabbi Amos in the Tanya. Shalita, Admea Vesrim, big tzaddik. He, he's one of those great men that are Bichlal, not even in this world. He's holding in a different world. He says, what Reb Amos tells me, I'm going to do. He comes to Reb Amos, young boy, and he says, I've been cutting hair now since I was 14 years old. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I'm thinking of maybe going into something else, alarm systems, cameras. He asks Reb Amos, what should I do? Reb Amos tells him, it's not for you. Leave it. There's too many halachot. Leave it. Too misubach. Too many isurim. Too many issues. Leave it. I said, okay. All right, I'll leave it. He says he left. He dropped the barber. Shop. Haircut it. And he went into security cameras and all different things. Turns out. <sighs> that he uh, meets a wonderful girl. They get married. He makes a family. He comes to the United States. And he goes to New Jersey. And he starts over a life. And over here in the United States, he had nothing to start with. And the only skill that he had in his hands was cutting hair. Nobody was hiring at that time. He didn't have any other options. And he had a family. He says, you know what? I know Rabbi almost told me stay away from it. But let me just start, just to put something on my table. Then from there, we'll see. This guy is a great barber. That met something unbelievable. Everyone loves him. They come from all over. He has appointments from here till uh, unbelievable. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the bar. He starts cutting here again in Jersey. In a place that there are no Jews. None. But he started because that's what he knows how to do. And he has to put food on the table. One day in a neighborhood of not one Jew in town. This Jewish guy, Israeli guy, comes walking into his shop. Where? From who? From where? Where does this guy fall? He sits down. Ah, hello. Ah, hey, what's doing? They start talking little by little. And this Israeli guy tells him, what are you doing here in this godforsaken town in Jersey without any Jews around? Go to Brooklyn. Male anashim Yehudin. It's filled with Jews. That's the place you'll be able to really rack up a great clientele. You'll be able to make a great parnasa. Over here, you're hardly making it. With goyim, they're never going to be mitchabered to you. Go to the Jews. Go to Brooklyn. He said, Ken, there is such a thing. He had no idea what Brooklyn was, what Jews, where, who. What. He had no idea. He says he got into his car. He drove out to Brooklyn. He took him around this area. He showed him. Take a look, Avenue J, Avenue M, Coney Island, King's Highway. He was like, wow, I haven't seen this since Israel. I didn't know this place existed. Malay Yehudim. Him and his wife picked up from Jersey, came to Brooklyn. What did he do? What he knows how to do. But he had a heavy heart. He didn't want 
But he, this is what he did. Was Rabbi able to do? So he continued to cut the hair. He starts cutting hair and he gets more popular and more popular and more clients. Now he's male. He's booked up for weeks. To get an appointment by this guy is tough. Appointment. He's doing great. He decides, you know what? I'm going to take it now to the next level. I'm opening my own barbershop. My own barbershop. He calls up a real estate agent. They find him a store in a great location in this area. He's about to make the big move. The guy says to him, the real estate guy, listen, there's just one thing I need to see if it's an issue or not before I give you the store. I'll give you an answer by tonight if it's yours or not. He says, okay, thanks. That day he goes home and he's praying, please let me get the answer. Let me have my own store. I'll finally make it big. As he comes home, on one of the streets here in Flatbush, two Hasidim come walking down his block, looks at him, and drives a car, starts up a conversation with him. And they start talking to him in Hebrew. Mashloncha, where are you from? Through the conversation, he finds out that these two Hasidim, it was like a, it was like a, a, a Rebbe with his Hasid, they ask him, what part of Israel are you from? He says, I'm from the Tanya. They said, what? We're also from the Tanya. We're just here in America collecting a little bit to bring back to our yeshiva. What part of the Tanya? And they start talking, this street, that street, this neighborhood. Wow, he says, this is crazy. Randomly out of the blue, I bumped into two Hasidim from the same city that I grew up. We're both from the Tanya. So they ask him, what do you do for a living? He says, I'm a barber. I cut hair. They said, oh. He says, do you give kosher haircuts? He says, well, you know. It depends on what the client wants. Sometimes if they want the fade, they want the shark teeth. Sometimes if they want the little step here and there, I take a step down to step up my business in order to be able to make parnasah. What can I, I know? It's asur. I know you're not allowed to cut. I know I'm coming. I know you're not allowed to cut the payout. But what am I supposed to do? It's my parnasah. What much I do? He says, but these are isur in the oraita. He says, I know. I should really get away from this. So they said. This isn't a business for you. The barber turns to these two Hasidim in front of his house, random pigisha, and says, you know what? Someone else told me this years ago in the Tanya, Rev Amos. They said, what? We are the Hasidim of Rev Amos. He said, what? Today I'm supposed to close on the store for my barbershop. Tonight, I'm supposed to get the answer to open up the barbershop. I talked to Rabbi almost 15 years ago. Today, the day I'm supposed to open up my own place finally. And the students of Rabbi Amos on a block in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York, shows up out of the blue in front of my house, delivers me the message, this isn't for you. And you're the students of the very rabbi that told this to me 15 years ago. Abba, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. You never gave up on me. You love me. Your mercy is beyond. Abba, you came right back to me again and again and again. You didn't throw the towel in on me. You still think I could be something. He goes into his house and he tells his wife the story. His wife, Sadiket, Israeli girl, tells her husband, Are you blind? Do you get clearer than that? Hashem is telling you black and white. He followed you to America. From Jersey to Flatbush. You don't think the first Israeli guy walking into your store in Jersey in a God-forsaken neighborhood where there is no Jew to be found for miles wasn't the first eye-opener? Pick up your messages. You don't think now he brings you to Flatbush to put you around, Yehudim? You don't think he plans to Hasidim in front of your house on the day you're supposed to close on the store in order to tell you, don't do it. I love you. He says, that's it. He calls the real estate guy, he says, I'm not taking the store. Ah, yeah, yeah, our ballet teshuva, unbelievable. I'm not taking the store. That night, he calls up all his clients 
that take the hair style of haircuts that are non-kosher haircuts, he cancels all his appointments. Ah, yeah, our, our Yehudim, our Jews. He says, Abba spoke to me. I felt him grab my hand. I felt him be meromemoti. I felt him pick me up and hug me. He's mercy. He's love. He wants to be in your life. Every step and every moment of the way. Lech lecha el haaretz asher areka. Thank you for listening. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.